Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel and also welcome back to what if Deku was a fallen. Now I'm going to give a little bit of context here of why Deku has that certain armor on. One, he will get that eventually. He, the reason why I say eventually is because he hasn't built it himself yet. He's going to start building that on his own. And the reason is, it's because there's a particular enemy that we all start fighting in, well, Destiny 2. If you ha don't know who I'm talking about, play, but you've only played um, Destiny, the first Destiny. I suggest you buy Destiny 2. Because they, the primary enemy in Destiny 2, they're big, they're annoying, and they basically say, screw your walls, basically. So yeah. And they're also red as well. And that's the reason why they, I call Deku's faction the Red Hearts. So now, there's an enemy on Destiny 2 that claims your city that you're from. And they're red. So these are virtual counterparts to that particular enemy that are part of the same faction. Now... And not only that, the other reason why I also said Deku didn't really like the Kel S. Technically, she's his adopt. He is her adopted brother. He's not related to her by any means. He was found as an infant. But he found out he was adopted when his adoptive mother, who was the original Kel, passed away. Completely due to natural causes and all that. So yeah, but Deku also has a bit of a, a background that he's not truly aware of. Just to let you know. I made this decision myself when I started talking about Deku and how he doesn't really like the Kel and how the Kel doesn't really give two shits about him. Those two don't really see eye to eye. But when he comes up with an idea, she listens. Then claims it'll be all her idea and everybody agrees with her. The only one person who actually agrees with Deku's idea cold-heartedly, because he's the original person who comes up with it, is the Baroness Uraraka. And yet, those two have had a one of the best friendships that either of them could have. So, yeah. And the image is what, as I said, is the armor that Izuku's going to create, well, craft himself. But as I also said, that's going to be some time until he crafts it. There's going to be some time until he crafts it. Okay? By that time, he will actually be a baron. I mean, he will be a baron, but there will be a few things that he has to do first to A. Make himself useful, and B. Not really listen to his adoptive sister. So anyway, on with the show. 
after this little expedition. <laughs> so, when we last left off is that Deku and Muraka were talking. They got to his holdings where he spends most of his time alone. But, as I said also in the last one, Muraka told him that they're going back to the Cosmodrome tomorrow. So, we're skipping ahead to that time. Where Deku actually does get up, get his slap his arm back on, goes to the skiff, and waits for Uraraka and her entourage. All the rest of her entourage to turn up, because he's a part of it. And she walks up with a group of new people. Deku just says, Morning. As usual, I got here before you again. And who are these new guys? And so the record just says, this, There are new group, well, team members. I'm surprised the rest of them haven't turned up yet. There should be a lot more of us here than just us. As, well, everybody just stands there for a bit. Deku just fundles around with his equipment, making sure it's all in one piece. Is one of the fallen walk up to him and sort of asks him a question saying, So, what are we doing and where are we going? Is Becky just looks up saying, Don't know, going into the Cosmodrome for one. I don't know what we're doing. Most probably looking for salvage. So either you guys got some good experience salvaging things, or you literally just got to an age where you can join us. Court of War One rule that the Baroness has. You follow her orders, but if you've got any good ideas that she will believe that will work, you tell her. You don't steal from others in the house. Any equipment that you find, you share it with everybody. So if you find blueprints that you could that you think could help the house, you take it immediately to the Baroness and she'll send it to the Kel and the Kel will decide what to do with it. But if there's anything technical that you cannot do, you come to me or the Baroness. I am good with electronics and I'll be able to get it working. But other than that, we all report to the Baroness. Anything we find Supplies, ether rash supplies, stuff to make ether. You name it, bring it back immediately. But considering I don't know what we're doing, we're going to have to wait. As well, Deku says that, as a few more people listen in to what he's saying. As eventually. 19, well, 19 more people turn up, aka more fallen. As one of them is a captain, as he says, let's get going. I don't particularly want to be wasting my time with the useless brigade. As Deku just gets up, tells him to shut his trap, and calls him a worse than even a dreg. 
And as you all might have gathered from the last episode when I called Deku a drag. Yes, Deku is a drag, but considering they don't have many members in the house, they've only got 100 civilians, which should be a good thing, and 300 soldiers, most of them are inexperienced and often or not find ways to mostly get robbed of all the ether and supplies mainly by the house of devils and the fallen that do don't really have markings on them to show which house they're from you may not call that you may call that smart but it's particularly not because if you don't belong to a house everybody and their mother quite literally will pick on you and in fallen terms that means take everything you have <laughs> ouch and uh, Uraraka and Deku's group getting called useless by a captain who's actually who should actually be a dreg himself. Yeah. Deku is already more of a captain than anybody else. Because uh, he actually has authority. He's more of an authority figure. Everybody actually thinks of him as a captain or a kel. But everybody knows that the Kel S, which is his adopted sister, but they don't know he's adopted by the Kel. They all just believe that the Kel is his sister, so they don't back chat him. But well, everybody thinks that apart from Uraraka, because Uraraka actually knows the truth, because Asuku's told her. Is the captain says, if you weren't. The brother of the Kellis. I'll just punch you in the face and kill you on the spot. This Deku just tells him to shut his trap, get on the skiff, and obey the Baroness's orders. Mr. Baroness says, All right, everybody, listen up. We are going to such and such a location in the Cosmodrome to set up a small underground outpost again, like we did last time. And hopefully we don't get followed by any groups of Fallen from the Devils this time. We won't be using the same place we landed at last, because knowing our luck, well, not uh, knowing our luck, knowing the Devils, they would have already found it. And set up surveillance to try and catch us out. So the skiffs are going to land us in an unknown location. And we'll move on foot from there. We've got ether rations aplenty for this trip. So let's go. As we all get on board. And leave. Let's see. Well, land an unknown location. Deku and his small group get off to secure an area. There's the Kel. Well, not Kel. As a director, the captain and their groups jump down as well. As they find or well, try to locate a suitable place for an outpost that's underground as Deku goes forward he motions with his hand saying move out quietly as the bearing says what do you think do you think there's a place nearby as Deku just says, possibly. 
we possibly might have to make a place to get into. Possibly somewhere where there's a few doors. I'm thinking... There. That place there. That might have a place for us to get into. As he points to what looks like an old cafe shop. That is reasonably still standing, but has a lot of damage. As yes, they say, well, as Odoraka says, all right, keep going, let's get going, to see if, well, to see if we can get in that place. As they all get going, not double timing it, but keeping it at a steady pace where they don't rush right into an ambush. And, uh, yeah, they actually find a lot of plentiful salvage within that cafe shop. A lot of it could be turned into ether rations. Some of it can even be made into makeshift fortifications. Teki actually finds pieces of steel that he picks up in his hands and puts over the door as they walk through. Barricading it so just in case any bad guys come across, they'll just think of it as, huh, must have fell like that when the building was hit by whatever. And they sort of scavenge through, finding a, uh, well, a hole within the bank, leading down. Deku and a few people go down there to discover the hive. There's a small hive post there. So, yeah. Before they could even, like, report back, they get jumped by the hive. And, well... Deku shouts over the radio saying, We've got hive down here. This was a bad idea for me, by, my, by me. But it's a small out... I think it's a small outpost here. So we could still clean them out and take this for ourselves. It's just going to take... Get off of me. As a threat, as a um, thrall grabs him, trying to rip him from limb to limb. As he just throws it off, stamps on its head, as, it, as you get a satisfying crunch. And... Then he pulls out his Kakuri, that all four and have, even the Drakes have in this. Basically a very small knife, but strong enough to kill a hive. As he like slashes another hive across the arm, then stabs him on the um, temple, the big black temple on its top of its head. I don't know what it's called. As well, as they finish all the hive off, they find a lot more salvage than they realised. The hive was virtually sitting on a on a literal vault full of old technology, basically like not like weapons or anything like that. Well, no, actually, I'm going to say weapons because it turns out some people use this as a uh, smuggling ring before they went into the city well cities because there's three cities a small one and a and two big ones as well Deku Uraka the captain and the rest of the Fallen that survived, radioed back to the Baron, well, 
to the to their kill and said we found stuff here but we're going to need a lot more people to get it out weapons ether ra weapons stuff to make more ether rations with yada 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 There's the kill. Says fine. I'll send some more people over as well. Two more skiffs full of people, full of more fallen land, and they make it a smallish outpost within, well, within that cafeteria or the cafe. Sorry. Is they hear a hive, but they also see when well as these fallen see the hive, the hive don't see them. As Unarakin says quietly, so the hive don't hear, saying, "Get your asses inside quickly. We can't let these hive find us." As they all rush into the, well, under area. As then they hear the hive scream. As it, then they hear automatic gunfire. Explosions and, well, somebody saying, Ye to the hell ya. Like shooting a fish in a barrel. As they also hear somebody shout frame unit 263, 299, and 6596. Two targets to your left. Um. So squad A to squad B, please make your status reports as soon as you secure your two sectors. As they all don't realise that there's the Fallen, as the Fallen have actually gone all underneath ground. They also hear somebody walk through, well, smash open a window and jump through. As he says, then gets a radio call as he puts on loudspeaker. As he says, Yo, Titan, how you doing, big man? I haven't heard from a guardian in quite some time. As one of these fallen overhears it and says very quietly, Ghouls. Great, just what do we need? As he quickly slides himself back to his other people, saying, Last city, last city's patrol. Securing sectors. One of them is now speaking to Guardian. To the ghoul, to the ghouls. Didn't hear anything else, just that he's talking to ghouls. We need to be careful now. Is Uluraka just face palms saying, Oh, this is just great. Get back up there. As he points to the one that one fallen and then she points to another and Deku saying you three get up there keep an ear out let's say yes just say yes Baron as they quietly get back up as they hear the final parts of the conversation saying nah all we had is that squad of well, that group of hive, but we have no fallen activity here. 
So I guess the city was that city was just well not really overreact just overreacting to nothing. Don't worry, I'll don't worry, we'll still keep an eye out for those for the fallen just in case the reports were correct. Send a report to the vanguard of the last of one of the other cities in old russia well here in old russia yeah yeah don't sorry sorry for the pausing guys as he also says yeah yeah don't worry don't worry don't worry guardian We'll keep an eye out. Why the hell would you be sending a warlock here? Fine, fine, fine. If you're going to send one warlock, you might as well send a fire team, just in case. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. We're gone. Thank you, Guardian. Okay, okay, Guardian Eda. You're a pain in the ass, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. Isara out. As the finish listening into the conversation as he gets another communication and says and they hear squad A and squad B reporting sectors secured signs of fall, fallen in both sectors house of devils must have been their skiffs we, like, we detected Isaiah, you're going to meet us there? Yeah, I'm going to meet you there. Be aware we got a warlock, guardian, we got a guardian fire team. A warlock, one titan, and a hunter. So, so keep your eyes out for them, okay? Roger that. Drinks are on me tonight if... We ever do make it back. Yeah, yeah. Encountered one group of hive, so shouldn't really be too much problems. Copy that, sir. Meet you back at meet you back at the head not headquarters. Meet you back at the small outpost. Roger that. See you later. Oh, and send a report to the vanguard in old Russia. The last safe, safe city underneath the Traveller. They need to know what's going on. And they can send it to the next cities as well. Next two cities as well. Yes, sir. As they hang up. Isaiah then calls out for... The frames to fall in, they're heading off to the next sector. As the well, as Deku pops his head around a corner, seeing Aizawa jump through a window and move on, followed by the frames. So Deku quickly scampers out to keep an eye on him. Is he tells the other two forward in a quiet voice, saying, Go back down to the Baroness. Tell her that patrol moving on. But stay st stay there for a couple of minutes more, just in case. There could be more hive around. As they do. As they go and do that. Unaraka then comes out. Kneels beside him, well, 
beside him behind cover. And she says, So, how many were there? And Deku says, There are two teams that have already taken out four of them. Well, House of Devil patrols. They haven't detected us. They thought it was the House of Devils. So we managed to get them to have a fight with devils, leaving us clear to move on. Good. We can get all the supplies out. I had a message from Nikel. She said she's gonna she's authorized us to make a outpost here. But we're gonna have to keep it all a secret. But we need to find a better location so the skiffs can come in and out. Deku just then says, How about we go deeper inland? There could be some place bigger for us. As the director says, the hive are everywhere here. So we need to find some place that has A that is A underground and B has big enough space for skiffs to come in by. There's a mountain range not too far away from here, covered by thick forests. Don't know about the creatures in that forest, but it should be big enough for skiffs to land. We'll leave all the scrap here, and we'll have to come back for it later. We have to set up that outpost first, okay? Copy that, Baroness. As they... well all get up and leave. They place a um, marker down that's hidden, but they can just home in on it whenever they need it. Well, whenever they set up their outpost. As they go, they encounter a group of hive that look like they haven't noticed them, so they had to try and sneak around. That's also when they find, yet again, well, yet again, aka, they find another patrol of last cities. And it turns out to be the fire team of guardians that do their patrol that are doing a patrol. As they kill all of the hive, the fallen quickly scamper off into the shadows, trying not to get detected. And luckily these guardians can't just keep on walking and go straight for an outpost nearby. As Deku just sort of sarcastically just says, Phew, that was way too close. But hey, if they can see us, that means they're either deaf or blind. Perhaps these ghouls aren't as big of a problem as we thought, as they all move on. So heading straight for the, well, forest. Finding a suitable clearing near the, well, wa near a water's edge of a lake. As they, well, clear out some wild animals. They set up shop in a cave. As they contact the Baroness, saying, located the last city patrol, but also located a ghoul fire team as well. Not enough firepower to take them out, so we had to sneak around them as well. Their Baroness said, I wouldn't expect anything less from you guys. But hey, if there's one ghoul on its own, kill him. Kill him, take whatever they have on him, then get out. How's the salvage operation going? We left a tracker 
set of coordinates for the salvage that we found. Hopefully no other fallen will get to it. And then we'll be able to collect it piece by piece. We won't be able to stay in there too long just in case there's another patrol of either Hive or Last Cities patrol. Or worse, ghouls. We could possibly salvage orders from dead Last City members. As Deku walks in, saying, we got a problem. As Uraraka says, not now, not now, Deku. I'm in the middle of a conversation with the Kel. As he says, house devil problem. As they all drop what they're doing, as they all listen to what he says. House devil patrol nearby. Big one at that. Patrolling outside of forest. Look like they are looking for somebody. Or looking for somebody or something. Don't know what. I had to get out of there as quick as I could. If we don't leave, House of Devils may find us. Suggest we re suggest suggestion keep heads down and don't go anywhere. Radio silence for twenty four hours. As the Kel says out of the question the season where new newborns come and join house need ether to keep them sustained continue with operations as Deku interjects saying if house is discovered devils kings or other fallen houses on earth jump at us devils large devils strong take devil army to crush house we weak but we might have to be weaker so we can survive as Uraraka says what you're suggesting is suicidal we don't have that much ether back home and without that ether newborns can't walk on the work walk on this world to fight with us as Deku just interjects saying prefer house survival from devils at the minute than the young ones I know not favorable but how survival depends on decisions as well all the fallen that heard him say that just jump on him and start beating the absolute living hell out of him as the cow just sits there in amusement saying that's idiot that's idiot talk that's also the words of a traitor so either a you sort your act out follow my orders or you get exiled so so you have those two options and knowing you you will not be able to survive that long on your own so shut up and follow my orders Continue with salvage operations. I don't care what that dreg says. You follow my orders or die. As she tells Uraraka to lock him up and never give him any ether rations. As Uraraka says, yes, Kel. Just simply says, yes, Kel. As everybody sort of says, serves this idiot right, we should just chuck him out for the devils to find and kill. 
if somebody says don't do that or otherwise he'll just tell the tell the house of devils where we are Deku just says never betray house like that I prefer the people to lose a lot of youngling young ones than risk entire house being slaughtered by house devil as somebody as a captain short sort of comes up and kicks him smack in the face saying nobody asked you what you were talking about or even thinking we should just kill you where you stand as the rocker interjects saying if we do that then we're no better than each then then we're no better than other fallen houses lock him up i don't like it but we're gonna have to lock him up as others who actually heard what deku said but also agree with him which is only like two just pick him up and drag him off to a cell. Uh, well, makeshift cell and just throw him in there. There's a Waraka walks up behind him saying, Do you two agree with what he said about leaving, letting the young ones die so the house could survive as a whole? As they silently just nod their heads, and as Odoraka says, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one who agreed with that. And she also says that in a low voice, so nobody else heard. As Deku just says, can you understand why I don't see eye to eye with my sister anymore? She's a coward. And an idiot. She made a very bad choice. House of Devils may know where we are. Sending patrols out alerts them to our presence. And our presence cannot be compromised here. And besides, it was only for a day. As well. A day goes past of salvaging, and you all might have guessed it, House Devil found them and petitioned them to serve House Devil. And they went straight to the Kel, because Odoraka was in a meeting with the Kel as the House of Devils burst open their, well, barricades. As they shout, well, as the, they all point at the cow, saying, You join House Devil or you die. You do not get a choice of this. You have two days to make your decision. Join us or die. And that's actually where I'm leaving it off, guys. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe. And, yeah, things have really <laughs> heated, up, heated up now, but see ya.